Hello fellow plot questers and welcome back to another review. Today we've got an Agatha Christie masterpiece murder on the links. And well, let's get straight into it. So as usual, since it's an Agatha Christie book, I'm not going to give you the full summary. I'll just talk about some of the setup and a little bit of the beginning and I won't reveal the main plot twist. And I'll also give my general writer's perspective. Here we go, summary. Paul Reynolds, a pretty well-known businessman, calls for Poirot's assistance through a letter of which it says, please, in the name of God, come. By the way, that might not exactly be the quote, but something like that at the end of the letter. And Poirot says, well, this is interesting because it seems that he's pretended that the last bit was rushed. Instead, it was done in cold blood. He meant to put that instead of, instead of actually, you know, acting out of instinct. And he wanted you to think that it was out of instinct, which, you know, is an interesting thing coming from a letter. Unfortunately, when Poirot and Hastings together arrives, Reynald has already been murdered. Poirot must figure out who did it. And all of the characters are very, very suspicious. Eloise is wife, his wife, who tells a story about two masked men tying her up, looking for some kind of secret from his, from her, you know, hus from her late husband, Paul Reynald, and taking Mr. Reynald out, then killing him in cold blood. Jack. Their son, the late Mr. Ronald's son, who had an argument with him the day before in which he threatened that he would kill him. M Madame Dabrelle, I don't know how to say that name, neighbor and possible mistress of Paul Ronald, who was seen taking money from him, blackmailing him, it seems, or perhaps something is going on here. Maybe Paul, maybe that woman is his mistress? Is the is the husband cheating on his wife? Or, or what's going on here? And Marthe de Brella, daughter of the neighbor, who has anxious eyes at the start of the book, and the love of Jack's wife. Meanwhile, Cinderella, or that's not her actual name, but someone who calls herself Cinderella, a beautiful girl Hastings meets at the start of the book at the train, who seems to be snooping around the area, is one of these people the murderer. Now, I want to talk about what Christie does. I'm not going to say more, but okay, it's absolutely amazing what Christie does. She always gives us a very obvious hint who the murderer is, then leads us completely away from it with multiple twists and turns. Some may argue that Christie uses the exact same formula to do her work, and she uses the same structure where, oh, the, everyone is suspicious, and then there's the actual person, and then we kind of move away from it, then we come back. That's how the mur murder mystery usually goes. But that is actually the mastery of it, because Christy expects us to guess, expects us to think, okay, she did this in Murder on Orient Express, she might do this this time. And she takes that into calculation as well, that guessing, that doubt, and tricks us every single time. This one especially had so many multi-layered twists. Like, it wasn't just one twist. It was like twist after twist after twist after twist. And it was absolutely insane. And as per usual, Poirot's method of investigation of pure thought, psychology, let the little gray cells in my brain do the work. That was also amazing. Not the usual, oh, fingerprints and a cigarette butt left on the ground. Like, all of that, you know, that, that's cool. That's Sherlock Holmes stuff. But, as Poirot says, that's what the hounds do. What you do as the hunter, you must think. You must think about what this man was doing. What this criminal had in mind while committing the crime. He finds the motive, and he finds, finally, arrives to know objective truth. In some ways, the way he thinks, the way he organizes his mind is similar to philosophy, which I believe is a thought construction method that you know, everybody uses it's logical thought construction. Okay, it cannot be that. The motive, what was this person thinking when they did this? Why was that door left open? Why is there a lead piping here? Okay, why is the psychology behind this? It is absolutely amazing that he did this. And I thought that it was just really, really good. And there are so many multi layer twists again and again. I will mention that. And I just thought this book was really, really great. It's just. The way she brings together her narrative, the way she foreshadows these minute details about characters and subtly kind of foreshadows stuff that they kind of brings together is absolutely amazing. Like if, for example, if Poirot talks about, oh my gosh, she is like a brilliant actor or, oh, 
I saw that she fainted, and I thought, okay, maybe she could be an actor, and check that she actually had fainted, so I knew it was that. That's gonna come back to us, and bite us in the back. Not in the way you expect, expect it, either. It's absolutely amazing. You need a freaking degree to understand and predict what Kirstie's gonna do with her mysteries. It's amazing. And that's about it. And like always, your plot twister and the plot twister, I know the review was a little short, but you know, it's, it's a Christie book, man. I, I can't just spoil what happens. I can't just blab away. I will tell you, however, the basic premise and how masterful Christie did this particular mystery. And that mastery is absolutely beautiful. I would highly recommend 9.9 .9 out of 10. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.